Hi there, and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno, and it's time for Fruit of the Month once again. For the month of May, I thought we'd paint this nice peach with a peach slice. It's um, realistic, but pretty simple because I break it down step by step. So if you enjoy this tutorial and you want to tune in for more, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you know when I have new videos out. So with all that being said, let's just jump in and get painting. So before we start, I'll just run through my materials for you. Today I'm using my Bao Hong Academy Cold Press Watercolor Paper. It's 100% cotton, 140 pound. I'm using a piece roughly 5 by 7.5. I have my Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette, jar of water and a paper towel of course. And for brushes, I have three um, on standby. I'm not sure if I'll use them all. I've got a Princeton Snap in a size four round and I've got uh, two Curry's brand brushes, one in a size 10 round in their 2500 series and a six round in their 2400 series. You'll also need a pencil and an eraser because we're going to draw this out before we paint. Oh, and one more important thing, I have a reference photo. Now keep in mind, as I always say, it's a reference photo and we're not um, trying to get it exact, okay? It's just there to help us along. So to start, I'm gonna start with the peach slice and it's just curved and comes down. Hopefully I can nail this in one fell swoop, we'll see. And goes back up. And then before you bring it all the way up, you're going to stop a little short and just put a straight line diagonally upward from that. Okay. Then we're going to actually, I'm going to bring this one up a little bit more. Whoops. This whole line actually. I'm just going to draw it in and then I'm going to draw everything darker so you can see it and then I'll lighten it before we paint. So this almost comes right around again and then we're going to draw a line down where the pit was. Okay just like that and then so you can see the inside where the pit was another kind of bumpy line just like that. Okay this could be a little bigger but anyway it's all good. Now we're going to show a little bit of the skin just on this edge. If you saw my lime video, it's basically the same shape as the wedge of lime that we did. So this is going to just come out. Not a lot of skin is going to show here. And it's going to come just short of where that point is. Okay, and then you just draw a line down to join those. Okay, so that's our slice. Now we're going to do the whole peach. And it's going to start about here. Again, I'm just using the photo as a guide. Okay, I'm not going to break my neck trying to match it exactly. Then we've just got a round peach. And it's not going to go as low as the slice because the slice is in front of it. So it's going to come in and then a little kind of bump where like the little bum part of the peach is. Then we've got to figure out where we want our stem to be and it's going to be about here. So I'm just going to draw around, not even around, kind of an almost round shape and that's the tip of the stem. The stem is really short on this so it's buried deep inside the peach but once you have that established you can then draw that little wedge where that um, stem pops out of and that's going to be like the little hole. So just go down and a little wavy kind of shape like that and then it's going to come back up 
and then curve down. And that's going to be where our little bum part of the peaches. Just like that. Okay. And then this will all come to life once we get our shadows and everything in there, but that's basically where it is. And then you've got your leaf that comes out. The leaves are really close inside where the stem is on peaches. So we're just going to bring this out, have it curl back over the peach and just kind of stick out in the air there. Okay. So there's our leaf. So that's basically it. I'm hoping you can see this. I'm not going to erase it entirely because I kind of want it as a little bit of a guide too. And I really won't be too upset if some of the pencil lines show through. So hopefully you can see that well enough that you can pause the video while you draw it or take a screen capture of it either or but yeah there's so there's the peach I'm just gonna pick it up and look at it head-on I think it could come out a little more over here so I'm just gonna erase this line That's a little better. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. A, because it just doesn't have to be, and B, because nature isn't perfect either. Okay, so there's your peach. I'm just going to lighten the lines with my kneaded eraser, and then we'll start painting. Okay, so I think the lines are light enough, and I'm going to start with... I had already mixed some colors because I was doing some testing. Um, but to start off, I'm just going to lightly wet the area where I want to paint. And it's going a little pink because my brush wasn't clean. Oh, well, that's okay. Whoops. It can be a little bumpy here where the peach pit was. So I'm leaving a white line there where I don't want pigment to go because that's where I want to put in a lighter bit of yellow okay when we paint the peach so I don't want to fill that in with red when I go and put the red in it doesn't have to be sopping wet at this point because we're going to do a lot of bleeding in with the yellow and the red Okay, so that's that. So now that's not as kind of curved as I would like, but so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to use um, Azo Yellow Medium, and I've just put a the slightest amount of permanent red light in there, which is really kind of orange. You can see in my palette. Okay, so I'm going to start with that. Start with a wash of it. See how dark that is. It can be a little darker because it's going to dry lighter. Again, it can be bumpy where that peach slice is. And this is why I like to do it on a board because I can turn it whenever I want. I'm going to mix that a little heavier. It 
was just a little two doll. That's better. Okay, and because we had wet the area first, it's just gonna, it's not gonna bleed beyond where we have um, the water down. Okay, so you have a little bit of control there. I'm not gonna fill this whole side with yellow, but I do need a little bit of yellow just underneath the red. Maybe here too. And then we can go and start tapping in some red. Now for the red, I'm gonna be using Matter Lake Deep, okay, which is quite vibrant. And I also want a little bit of a darker tone. So I'm also gonna take some of that Matter Lake Deep and mix in a tiny amount of, tiny amount, that's not a tiny amount, a tiny amount of Prussian Blue. As you can see, that's not a tiny amount. And that'll give us a nice red for shadows and just deeper tones. Okay, so I'm gonna get that off my brush. I'm gonna clean my brush. I don't wanna go in with too much pigment and I'm just gonna get some on the tip. I'm gonna come right up to that slice and right down to the bottom there. And that's where I left that white space there. It should be a little more curved. I kind of didn't do a great job there, but that's okay. So this is gonna bleed out and it's gonna bleed out with a little bit of a yellow undertone, which is what we want. Now, when you come to the leaf, I'm just gonna do the tiniest amount, okay? It's gonna kind of act as a shadow plus some red tone. So when I get to here, I'm just gonna tap it, kind of push it around a bit and let it blend out. And then have it a little deeper as we go down. I'm gonna take some of that darker mixture with the um, Prussian blue in it and just tap it at the bottom for some kind of shaded tones. Could also put some up here just to give it some kind of shape. Just put a little bit more red in here. Now I'm going to grab my number six brush and just take most of the water off and just kind of soften this up a bit. Just like that. I don't want to mess around with this bleed too much, but just want to kind of bring it up a little bit. So I'm just kind of dragging this paint out because it's not bleeding as softly as I would like. So I'm just kind of tapping it around a bit. I'm also going to use this to put more red in. I don't want to go crazy with it. So that's why I want to use a smaller brush. And this will dry a little lighter, like I said. So now we'll go to the other side and bring in that red. I'm gonna make this curve a little bit more now. There we go. Now this doesn't have a highlight on it because it's not shiny, but where the light is hitting it, it is a little lighter, which kind of makes sense, right? And then there's also some yellow coming up out of where the stem is. So I'm just gonna do some little kind of lines coming out 
just let that bleed out. Okay, I don't want the red to overtake here, so I'm just drying off my brush and dragging it through to pick up some of that moisture so it doesn't bleed out too much. Then I'm going to tap some yellow back in there because the red was taking over a little bit. I'm also going to do it up here in the corner. Now that yellow should push that red paint back a bit as well, so that does help. But I just don't want to lose all that yellow at the top. You could even do some kind of coming up out of that hole there. Now I'm going to finish this off with red. Then I'm going to, oh, I can't speak. Then I'm going to tap in some of that darker red towards the bottom here. And then some just where that little indent goes to make that little peachy bum shape. It'll be even a little darker there. Even just a little bit here. Just like it just, I just don't want it to be flat. So I'm just trying to give it some shape here, but I don't want to overwork it. I did want a little bit of yellow coming down here too, so I'll pick up that and go in with the yellow. Okay, it won't be really strong, but it's there. And I could even afford to go in with a little more red here because it is going to dry lighter. And then just a hit of that darker color again, just to give it some shape. And I think we'll just let this dry. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to take a little bit of that red and just tap it there just to soften out that edge a bit. You have to be careful. You don't want to go crazy and start getting weird blooms, okay? So I think that's good. I may speed this up a bit with my uh, heat tool. If you do use a heat tool or a hair dryer, just do it very slowly because you kind of want those bleeds to still continue on, okay? I don't want the st I don't want to stop them like dead in their tracks, but for the sake of the video, I just kind of want to speed things up a bit. So I'm going to do it on low. Okay, so now that it's pretty much dry, you can see how much lighter it is. I do like it though, because it's um, got that kind of soft, kind of peachy look. We can go in and add some depth to it later if we choose to. So I'm going to take my number four brush now. We're going to work on the, um, the core part. Okay, so we want to make that look like it's like a deep, like a deeper hole. So I'm going to take so I'm going to take some burnt sienna with a little bit of sepia in it. Okay, and I don't want it too heavy, but it kind of just you just want to make sure that you get that shape. So it goes down. That's not dark enough actually. A little darker. So it goes down and curves and then comes back up. Now you don't necessarily want it this dark. Okay, so I'm just going to put it there because that's, I just want to know where it is. And then I'm just going to tap up. Well, I didn't mean to tap it up. So it completely disappeared. Okay, so just like that. Now we know where it is. Then I'm going to go around the top of the stem. which is kind of rough, okay? And then the leaf will be there too. Just like that. Then I'm gonna take some sepia, which is really dark, 
and I'm just going to tap that in. So it'll have a little bit of a softer edge to it, but it is quite dark in there. Okay, I may have lost that stem a little bit. I'll make it a little rounder. And then the top of the stem will have some dark kind of squiggly lines on it. And just to deepen it up even more, I'll just tap a little bit more of straight sepia just around the stem and that'll bleed out. So then just to give it more depth, I can go in with a clean damp brush, a little bit of the red and just put some around there and just kind of draw out some lines. Okay, I can even take that shadow color and tap it in there to make it look even deeper. Just like that. Then I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and really dry it off. And I'm just going to drag some of this red out. Okay, so it just looks like everything's kind of going in to that stem. I can even do another little red line here. And coming down there. Okay, and again I'm going to rinse off my brush, dry it off, and just kind of blend that out. Just like that. Now we're going to do the leaf, and I'm hoping the center part there is dry enough that it's not going to I think it's okay. For the leaf, I'm going to go to my num. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stick to my number four. And I'm going to use some sap green, a little bit of olive, just so it's not like crazy bright. And I think I'll throw in a little bit of that Prussian blue. That's nice. And I'm just going to start off with a wash of it and we're going to start at the tip and just bring it in to where I've got that pencil line for the leaf. Down into the core and then back out. It can be a little deeper there. Okay, I'm going to grab more pigment, tap it in towards the center. I'm just trying to get some shape to it. So I also want to pick up some highlights on here too. So I don't want it totally flat, dark green, but I want it deepest towards the core. Maybe a little bit up here. And you could even, just with the very tip of your brush, just go in and draw a little vein if you want. Might be too wet to do that, but maybe I'll just use my the trick that I always do with the back of my brush there. And then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of a highlight here. You've seen me do that before. That's just with a clean, damp brush. Okay, and I think that's it for the leaf. Then we're gonna move on to 
the peach slice. Actually, I'm going to go up to the number six brush now, and I'm going to use that same yellow that we used. And it'll be a wash again, and we're going to go over this whole area. Okay, so that's the inside of our peach. It can be a little deeper towards the skin part. I'm going to go to my number four brush again. And I'm just gonna go into that red, get a little bit of pigment on my brush, not a whole bunch. And I'm gonna work quickly here because I just wanna have a little hint of uh, red around where the skin would be. I, I don't know where the best angle is to come in at this. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. So that's not bad. Just like that. And I'm not gonna leave it that strong. I'm gonna rinse off my brush and we're gonna pick some of it up. Cause I just wanted like a slight hint of red right where the skin would be. You can even go back in with the yellow, just like that. And then also with the red, I want to bleed in a little bit where it was just at the tip of the pit or the edge of the pit. And I'm not gonna leave it that heavy again. I'm gonna go in with my paper towel and I wanna stop the bleed from this inside edge. Actually, it's not bleeding too badly. So I just wanna make sure it's not gonna to continue to bleed. Then I'm gonna pick some of it up with my brush. And it can be quite deep where it's right where the pit was. So you can tap in more pigment there. Maybe not that much. So I'm just gonna rinse and draw off my brush and just kind of, just using the tip, just drag some of it out. That didn't really bleed the way I wanted it to. So I'm just gonna kinda see if I can get this to bleed out a little bit. I don't wanna make the mistake of overworking it. So I'm gonna pick some of it up. Drag some of it out. You need to tap some of that yellow back in. Honestly, that worked better on my um, practice peach than it did here, but it's all good. That might work a little better. I'm going to drag this one out. Then pick more of it up. I am officially overworking it now. Okay, and then when the, where the peach pit was, you can take a little bit of this, well, that's way too much, yellow mixture. A little bit of orange. And just tap in some kind of 
rough splotches where the peach pit, where the peach pit comes out and you know how it's all rough tap in even a bit of the red there as well I think what will help is it can afford to be a little bit brighter. Okay, now we're going to do the skin on the outside of the slice. So going into that red and it's obviously it's going to be a little deeper. So I'm going to use my smallest brush and you have to be careful when you come down here because you want as thin a, a line as possible. Okay, so I'm going to start here. And then just try to make it as thin as you can when you come to the end of it. Okay. That wasn't very bright because that was still wet from when I added the yellow. Try to stop that bleed. Okay, just like that. I'm going to pick up a little bit of a highlight there just to differentiate it from the whole peach. Then I'm going to go in and get that darker shadowy color. Just put some right at the bottom edge of it. Okay, I'm also going to take some of that color and just deepen up the bottom of this peach. The bottom of the the whole peach. So I'm just dragging lines up like that. Then I'm going to wet my brush or clean my brush off, dry it off my paper towel and just kind of soften these out. It doesn't have to be perfectly soft. It's not going to ruin things if your peach has a little bit of texture to it. And I'm going to go into the yellow and I'm going to fill in this little hole that we left. It's a little bigger than I wanted, so I'm just going to kind of soften up the red just to tone that line down a little bit. Even take some more red. Just so you've got a little hint of that bum shape. I wish I could straighten that out, but let's see if this helps. I don't want to go crazy and start creating funny blooms and stuff, but I just wanted to kind of fix that up. It was a little rough. Okay, so for this last little bit of the video, I'm just going to speed it up and do a voiceover because I'm basically just doing touch ups. So I just went in with that red. Um, the deeper red and added some more towards the center just to make it look um, you know make the core look even deeper and again I added some more of the sepia as well here you'll see me going back to where the pit is taken out of the center and I'm just kind of beefing that up with a little bit more of the red just to make it pop a little more and I think it um, I think it did the job it looks a little better 
So I'm just basically playing around at this point and doing some touch-ups, adding a little more depth to where the uh, pit was taken out. And then I'm going to go in and take some Payne's Gray and just do a shadow. So I want it dark right at the very base of the peach and I just want to fade it out to pretty much nothing. Um, I was kind of in a rush here and a little impatient so it took a couple of kicks at the can. As you can see I put in way too much gray, had to wipe it out, dab it up, but anyway I just kind of played around with it a bit until it was semi decent looking and that was what I ended up with. I also wanted to point out that when I look back at this video, um, when I was editing it, it does look darker than the picture in real life. In real life, it's actually the soft and really kind of looks like fuzzy peach. So I think if you give this a go, you'll really be happy with the results. And I'm gonna call this done. So we'll take the tape off and have a look. So there is our finished peach for May's fruit of the month. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I really hope that you found it helpful. And if you do uh, decide to try this tutorial and you're on Instagram, please be sure to share and tag me so I can have a look. Thanks again for stopping by, take care, and I will see you next time.